Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Lena Wen. I am the Baltimore City Health Commissioner, and I'll be teaching you today how you can save a life. Today I'm going to be speaking about what opioids are, how to recognize an opioid overdose, how to respond to an opioid overdose, and other important information for you to know. Now, opioids are any drug that contains opium or its derivative. They can be natural or synthetic and be found in prescription and illicit drugs. They can come in pill, capsule, powder, or liquid form and can be swallowed, smoked, snorted, or injected. Opioids are often prescribed to manage pain, suppress cough, and treat opioid use disorders. They cause feelings of euphoria, contentment, or detachment, and their effects last from 3 to 24 hours. In excessive amounts, opioids can suppress a person's urge to breathe. Common prescription opioids include oxycodone, like Oxycontin, and Percocet, hydrocodone, such as Vicodin, morphine, codeine, methadone, buprenorphine, and fentanyl. Illegal opioids also exist and include heroin and non-pharmaceutical fentanyl and other illegally obtained prescription opioids. I want to spend a moment talking about fentanyl, which is a very dangerous medication. It is hundreds of times stronger than heroin and is extremely dangerous. It's often used to cut heroin in what can be a deadly combination that causes many over or overdose deaths and here in Baltimore City, we have experienced an epidemic of opioid deaths, including with fentanyl. Opioid overdose happens when a toxic amount of an opioid, either alone or mixed with other opioid or illegal substances, overwhelms the body's ability to handle it. Many opioid-related overdoses result from mixing prescription painkillers, or heroin, with benzodiazepines, which is a class of medication, also known as benzos, like Xanax and Ativan, or with cocaine or alcohol. Overdose is caused by respiratory failure, which is what happens when someone stops breathing, then there is no oxygen in the blood, no oxygen in the brain, and that causes vital organs like the heart and brain to fail. This then leads to unconsciousness, coma, and death within a matter of minutes. That's why it's so important that we do something when we see someone who is overdosing. Breathing and oxygen are key to surviving an overdose, and it's important for us to first recognize these signs and symptoms, and they include loud snoring or gurgly noises, a limp body, unresponsiveness, pale or gray or clammy skin, blowing of the lips or fingertips, slow or erratic pulse, very shallow breathing or no breathing at all, and then unconsciousness. Now I want to tell you how to respond to an overdose death so that every single person can save a life. We strongly believe that the medication, the antidote medication, naloxone, also called Narcan, should be part of every single person's medicine cabinet and every single person's first aid kit. Five steps. Step one, rouse and stimulate. Step two, call 911. Step three, give naloxone. And I'll explain a little bit more how you do that. Step four, further resuscitation. Step five, care for the person. Now I want to bring my assistant, Ms. Chala, to come and join me today. She will, be, she will help me to demonstrate what we'll be doing with, our, um, with how you can save a life. The first step, if you see someone who is unresponsive, is to rouse and, st and, and stimulate. So you shake the person and you yell, hello, are you okay, hello? And there is no response. If there is no response, you can do something called a sternal rub. Make a fist and rub your knuckles firmly up and down the breastbone like so. Step number two is to call 911. Any time that you encounter someone experiencing an overdose, it is critical that you get emergency medical help as quickly as possible. The person may have complications or other health problems, may need additional doses of naloxone, or their naloxone might wear off. Additionally, it may be a non-opioid overdose situation. 
When you call 911, it is important to tell the operator where you are and what you observe about the person, such as any signs of an overdose. When the emergency responder arrives on site, tell them what substances the person used and how much naloxone was given and when. The third step after calling 911 is to give naloxone. Now, naloxone is an antidote medication that reverses an opioid overdose by restoring breathing, has no potential for abuse or getting high, and has no effect on someone who has not taken opioids. Naloxone is safe for children and pregnant women, and it can be given three ways, intramuscularly through the muscle, intranasally through the nose, as I'll be demonstrating, or intravenously through a vein. Naloxone wears off in about 30 to 90 minutes. Side effects, again, are minimal and rare. It is important to remember that naloxone is only effective in reversing opioid overdoses. So how does it work? Naloxone works by knocking off and binding to opioid receptors, blocking their effects and quickly restoring breathing. When storing naloxone, do not attach naloxone to delivery devices until it's ready to use. Store naloxone in its original package at room temperature and avoid exposure to light. Keep it in a safe place away from children and pets, but easy to access in case of emergencies, perhaps in your purse or in your backpack, wherever it is that you are going, you should be carrying naloxone. Keep in mind that naloxone loses its effectiveness over time, so check the expiration date on the label. If you need to dispose of expired naloxone, visit don'tdie.org for further information or call us at the health department. There are several kinds of naloxone. To administer nasal naloxone, which I'm going to show you here, first, remove the caps from the needleless syringe. And all of these caps are the brightly colored caps that you'll see here. So these are the three caps that you remove. Second, screw the nasal atomizer. There are three pieces. There's only one way to put this together. So you screw the nasal atomizer, like so, into the top of the syringe. Third, remove the, pat, the cap from the pre-filled vial of naloxone, as I have done. Fourth, gently twist the naloxone vial into the delivery device until you feel it catch, like so. Finally, what you do is you tilt the person's head back so that naloxone will not run out of the person's nose and you spray half of the naloxone into one nostril and half into the other nostril. Allow one to three minutes for naloxone to work and continue resuscitation as necessary. If breathing is not restored after two to three minutes, you can give another dose of naloxone and continue resuscitation as necessary. Make sure that you stay with the person and provide care as directed until medical care arrives. Further resuscitation may be necessary. It is important to assess breathing after administering naloxone. If the person is not breathing or if breathing is shallow or short, give rescue breaths or if you are trained in CPR, administer traditional CPR, chest compressions with rescue breaths as necessary or follow the 911 dispatcher's instructions. Continue until the person wakes up or medical help arrives. Now I want to talk about assessing breathing. Three steps, look, listen, and feel. If breathing is shallow or short or the person is not breathing, start rescue breaths right away. Rescue breathing is the quickest way to get oxygen into the body. And one of the most important things you can do is to prevent someone from dying from an, overdose, um, from an opioid overdose. To perform rescue breathing, Lay the person on his or her back on a flat surface. Tilt the chin to open the airway and remove anything blocking the airway. Pinch the person's nose closed completely. Cover his or her mouth with your mouth and blow two regular breaths about one second each. Give one breath every five seconds. Stay with the person until medical help arrives. If he or she is unable to sit up, put the person into recovery position. If you have to leave the person even briefly, put him or her into the recovery position. This keeps the airway clear and prevents choking and aspiration if vomiting occurs. Keep the person calm if they wake up and encourage him or her not to take opioids. If overdose reoccurs, 
give another dose of naloxone. After receiving naloxone, a person may feel physically ill, they may vomit, they may experience withdrawal symptoms, become agitated or upset due to withdrawal symptoms or coming off that high, or having a seizure, although seizures are rare. These are normal side effects of giving naloxone because what naloxone does is it reverses the effect of that opioid. And so you are taking that person away from their high, but saving their life. Make sure every time I get to call 911, and after you administer naloxone, please also call the Maryland Poison Center at 1-800-222-1222. That's 1-800-222-1222 within two hours. Before we get you your certificate, we want to make sure that you're aware of important information for certificate holders. Good Samaritan laws protect people who administer naloxone from liability, and they protect people who call for medical assistance when they see someone experiencing an overdose. To get naloxone, print the certificate you receive at the end of this training and take it to any pharmacy. Under the standing order that I have issued in October 2015, the pharmacist will dispense naloxone to you. Remember, certificate holders do have some general responsibilities. Certificates are valid for two years. Apply for renewal no later than 90 days before your certificate expires. Administer naloxone in accordance with training procedures. Make a good faith effort to get emergency medical help for people experiencing opioid overdose. And please remember to contact poison control or training entity after administering naloxone. Finally, remember that the state Department of Health and Mental Hygiene may, may suspend or revoke your certificate if a certificate holder improperly uses or administers naloxone or DHMH determines is necessary in order to protect public health or safety. But you can file an appeal or write to DHMH requesting reinstatement of your certificate once you've corrected the problem. Or if your training entity doesn't meet DHMH requirements or has issued someone an invalid certificate, if that happens, you can apply for a valid certificate after completing training at an authorized entity. Ask DHMH for a list of approved entities. Addiction affects far too many people here in Baltimore City. We all know that there is no face of addiction. It's something that affects all of us. It could be our own family, our friends, our neighbors, our colleagues. And most importantly, we can each save a life. Now that you're trained in administering naloxone, you have the tools to save a life today. Thank you for watching.